video, we're going to talk about symbols in ES6. Symbols are new primitive uh, introduced in ES6, just like strings, numbers. It's a primitive, so it's you, and it's also unique, and it's an immutable data type. So I'll show you what that means later. And it also introduces the concept of namespace. So let's talk about the unique property of symbols. Now this code here may look familiar to you. So I have two variables, one called color blue and the other is color bad blue. I'm setting the value of each of them to be blue, the string blue. So when I do a council log of truly equal, um, they will be true. So they are actually equal even though the variable names is different. They, in fact, that the fact that they're equal to the same value makes them both equal. Now, with symbols in ES6, you can do something like that. However, ES6, the symbols are unique. So if I do something like that, so color red is declared by calling a symbols object with the key name red in there. So this here doesn't matter, but it's a unique key identifier you can pass to the symbol. It's optional, but here I'm setting it to red. And here I have another variable called color bad red. I'm setting it to also the same thing. Now if I want to see if they're equal, and you should see that it's false. So they are truly unique values in symbols. Symbol allow you to create val unique values. So you cannot access a symbol explicitly or convert it to a string. It's not a string. So if you have a symbol called foo, um, if you so by the way, you cannot do this part here. Uh, you don't have to say even though it's an object, you don't have you cannot say new symbol. This is bad. It will just throw an error when you run this. It's not a constructor. So don't do this because it will not work. So if I want to concatenate a new symbol foo into my string even though this is not a string and if I want to explicitly cast it as a string this will not work because you cannot convert symbol to a string so symbol you cannot do that however you can convert it in a way that if you explicitly do this you cannot do this because when you do this it try to convert it to a string by assuming what this is and then converting what this to that so if you want to do it correctly you can actually do this if you typecast it like this specifically explicitly to a string then this will actually work so if I bring back this thing here see however it's not going to be whatever the value this is set to it's going to be the worst symbol string foo so it's not a true value conversion to a string, but the actual object of symbol. So that's very interesting. So you can use symbol as a key name, mostly. Most people use symbol in ES6 like this. So I have a variable called key name and set it to equal to new symbol. And I have a user object that's empty. So I'm setting user key name to equal to foo. As you can see, I'm not doing the user dot key name because key name it's a it contains an underscore, so I have to do it this way. So when I do that, and then if I console log it, you see it's the value foo. So it's actually accessing the user dot key name property. So you can use it as a simple as a unique property name. This will guarantee the uniqueness when you set it. Now, here's how we can enumerate symbols. Let's say I have a symbol called my object. It contains a symbol property with a value called Sally. And then it contains a typical property one, property two, with value one and two, respectively. So if I want to get all the keys of this object, I can do this. However, you'll notice something when I run this. I'm only getting property 1 and property 2. So you cannot enumerate a symbol via object that keys. 
if you want to enumerate object the the symbol inside of an object, you have to do the API way. Object get own property symbols. This is a new property API of the object object, and you can use it to access only the symbol values. As you can see here, it will ignore all these other non-symbol values. Now if you want all of it, both the symbols and the regular properties, you can do reflect.onKeys. It's also a new uh, ES6 keyword that allows you to enumerate the properties. Uh, simple, you can, there's another API for simple, it's called simple.4. So to demonstrate, it looks simple enough, except you do simple.4. So the way this works is, I don't have to declare everything, anything, because simple.4 will first try to look it up, the x symbol x value. If it does not exist, it will create a new one. So by the time I get to here, it already created the new one, and then it will compare itself, the new one, to the value of itself, and therefore it's true. It may seem a bit confusing, but you can use it to look up values in symbols. So there's a really interesting built-in symbol. It's called symbol.iterator. You can, um, in the next lesson, I'll show you how you can use this and how powerful this is for iteration. But for now, you just need to know that there's something called symbol.iterator, and it is this. So what do we use symbols for? We use it to define unique object properties to avoid name clashes. And we can use it as a property private that you can only access via ES6 assessor methods. Otherwise, you have to explicitly say that you want to explicitly access the property. And you can you see, use them as a predefined way, like symbol.iterator, to do really powerful things like um, for of loop and the generator functions, which I'll show in the up next video. So thanks for watching. I hope this is useful. Um, please see the article in the description and the full source code. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.